Hey what is up guys, welcome to another Arbin Hardware video. In this video we're gonna build your next budget $500 gaming PC in late 2020 and in early 2021. Now we're gonna go over each PC port I picked for this build and why each PC component play nice together. We're gonna go over the whole process uh, step by step and we're then gonna fire up the PC and we're gonna look at some gaming performance and gaming benchmarks in case you decide to build this PC yourself. Now at any point during the video feel free to check out the links down below. With that said yeah let's get right into it. Let's uh, yeah kick the video off with the processor now for this build that was initially gonna go with the Ryzen 3 3100 from AMD and this is a great 4 core uh, budget pick. And it would have worked fantastic for this PC build, but yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't get the PC to start, so I'm gonna have to postpone that build, so, but it is coming out soon, so you guys, if you don't want to miss that, you want to make sure to subscribe to never miss any upcoming PC builds, but yeah, because we couldn't use the 3100, yeah, I ended up picking the bigger brother instead, the 3300X, and this is also a brilliant 4-core processor that can handle any game outer without lag or stutter. Now we're gonna install the 3300X in the Gigabyte B450M DS3H, and while it would have been nice to use AMD's all new B550 motherboards with support for upcoming CPU releases, but the B450 is actually so much more affordable than any B550 boards out there, so and it still comes with all the bells and whistles you need. And yeah, the thing is, this B450 would also support a future 50 and Ryzen processors from AMD as well through just an update that is coming in 2021. Now inside the box, we also find a CPU cooler, and this is actually pretty powerful. And in case you're not interested in doing, you know, heavy overclocking and whatnot. The included stock cooler is definitely gonna be more than enough. And the installment is pretty simple. First up, in order for the cooler to fit, we first need to untie these socket brackets you see here. And once these have been removed, yeah, we can install the cooler. Uh, if this is the first time you're using the cooler, there should be a thin layer of a pre-applied thermal paste pre-installed. Otherwise, you also need to apply a bit of thermal paste on the CPU. We're gonna screw this down corner by corner in a cross pattern. And before we are completely done here, we need to plug it in as well. And you find the CPU fan header right above the CPU socket. Now we're almost done with our motherboard and the only thing missing is our RAM sticks and for today's build I ended up picking these uh, dual RAM sticks from Corsair and these are called Vengeance LPX and each got 8GB oh, so this is 16GB in total now to get as much performance and FPS as possible I am picking fairly high clocked RAM sticks for today's build and every single detail and every PC part is linked up down below to install the RAM stick, simply pull back the clips for the two and the four dim slot space and simply plug them in just like so. And now, yeah, the fun starts. It is time to install a motherboard in our chassis. In today's build, we're gonna go with Cooler Masters, all new Master Box MB320L. This is by far the best budget MATX case on the market right now. And I've spent hours and hours researching. And yeah, there seems to be an enormous fan base around this case. And I have to say, after been playing around for it for a while, I am very impressed guys. Now we find two 120 fans in the front and these are so called ARGB fans so they can be addressed by the motherboard which is yeah quite nice. We also find uh, wide air vents on each side as you can see. You can also fit additional fans in the top as well as a single fan in the back. Now the top also comes with the dust filter and magnets which is very easy to take off and clean. Now in order to get inside the case, we need to first untie four screws that holds the temper glass side panel in place. 
Now, in order to install our graphics card, we need to take out uh, these uh, PCIe slots, and then we can just grab the CPU cooler and gently slide the motherboard in place. And this can be done by having the case standing up, but yeah, I actually prefer having it laying down like this. Using the motherboard screws, we can secure the motherboard in the chassis. And with the motherboard installed, yeah, let's flip the case around. And before we jump over and install our SSD in storage, I figured, yeah, this would be a great, a great time to perhaps install our chassis cables. Uh, takes care of the front audio and USB as well as power buttons, etc. I like to actually start with the USB 3 mainly because, yeah, it's the easiest one. <laughs> this is a wide cable that is almost impossible to get wrong. Next up, we got front audio, which goes to the spot on the lower left side. And as for the front panel connectors, yeah, we find these on the lower right side. And these can be a bit tricky, guys, but just take your time here. And uh, yeah, you should be go. Yeah, we also gonna need a power supply. And for this build, I ended up picking the Corsair CV550. It's 80 plus bronze efficiency, comes with sleeved cables, and it's, uh, yeah, world price. So gently slide in uh, the PSU with the fans facing downwards. There are a couple of cables here that we gonna need. First up we got the 24 pin power for the motherboard. This one goes to the right upper side. And then we got this 8 pin CPU cable. And yeah this one goes uh, all the way up to the upper left side corner. Now it's time to install our SSD and for this build I ended up picking the Kingston A400 with 480GB of storage and while this isn't the fastest SSD around, it is still very fast compared to old traditional mechanical spinning hard drives. Now in order to install this we need to locate four of these so called short stems, I think they are called, <laughs> gently screw all of them into the SSD. We then gonna need these four black rubber discs or washes I guess and you simply just take these all four out and you press them uh, on the back here until you see them completely going through the hole like this and after that you just take the SSD and you slide it in and you are good to go. Plug in the SATA cable as well as uh, the SATA power connector and route the SATA cable onto the other side and plug it in on the motherboard. It is time to go over our graphics card and for today's build, yeah, because both Nvidia and AMD is on the verge of releasing a whole new lineup of GPUs, I figured it wouldn't be the smartest idea buying a brand new last year GPU today, knowing that next gen budget graphics cards are coming out sometimes in 2021, so with that in mind, yeah, knowing that many gamers now are selling their uh, GPUs on eBay, we can get away pretty cheap here with a high-end 1080p graphics card for around 100 bucks so yeah I decided to go with the GTX 970 but if you're able to grab or snag let's say a GTX 1060 that would also be a very solid pick and the GTX 970 can be found for as low as 60 to 70 bucks and yeah still in 2020 and in early 2021 this is a fantastic 1080p graphics card and granted AMD also got great budget graphics cards that perform fantastic in 1080p as well but what I like about the 970 is that it supports one of Nvidia's great features like game record and streaming and yeah I'm actually a big fan of GeForce experience and then we can just gently install the graphics card just like so and then we're gonna use two screws to secure our graphics card last but not least we got the PCIe cables where the 970 needs a single 8 pin as well as a 6 pin connector in total and now there's only one thing left before we can actually turn on our system and this is the RGB now because this motherboard unfortunately doesn't have support for addressable RGB out of the box we're gonna have to add this so called ARGB controller and all we do is that we simply plug in the included ARGB cable to the RGB hub 
and then we just grab a free SATA power connector, we plug it in and we are officially done. It is time to turn on the system and it's time for some gaming. Oh, also guys, I almost forgot, first time you're booting up the system, make sure to double check that the RAM sticks are running in its XMP profile. And we're doing this by uh, tapping delete while we're seeing the Gigabyte logo. We then head over to the overclocking session, we select profile 1 and we are now good to go. Alright, so time for some gaming and again guys, something worth having in mind is that I'm currently running on the faster 3300X CPU and because of the incident I mentioned earlier, now while the 3100 is slower, there is not a massive difference between these two, but yeah, you may see a few fewer FPS with the 3100. But yeah, to put things into perspective, let's say you decide to upgrade the build with a GTX 1080 Ti. The reality is that the 3300X is about 13% faster than the 3100 on average. But yeah, with the slower end GPU, the difference is gonna be even smaller. With that in mind, first up we got the Vision 2. Now looking at the settings, we see in that I am selecting high as the pre predefined graphics preset here. And running with the built-in uh, benchmark tool results in about 45 FPS on average. And we can see that we are about 97% uh, GPU bound and this means that our graphics card is our limiting factor and it tells us that the CPU isn't holding back the system. Fortnite with everything set to epic, we were averaging between 60 and 70 FPS in a typical battle royale game mode. Grand Theft Auto 5 is next and I'm going fairly high with pretty much everything maxed out with only extended distance scaling and extended shadow distance left at default. Running the built-in benchmark tool, we're seeing numbers that is well above the magic 60 FPS mark and so 1440p should also be possible here with a few tweaks uh, to the graphics settings. For Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I am running the built-in benchmark tool with graphics set to medium and this gives us an average of 58 fps with the max at 120 and low at 30 so medium seemed like the perfect match for this pc build and overwatch is next up and here we're going with a mix between high to medium and if we jump into a quick match we're averaging around 120 to 130 fps and so overwatch yeah runs like a dream on this pc and as always in case you have and let's say a high refresh rate monitor, you can simply lower the settings a bit and you should see much higher numbers here as well. Finally, we got CSGO. This is a game from 2012, so it would be weird if the 970 would struggle <laughs> with this one. Uh, we're going with high settings here and we're averaging over 300 FPS on Dust 2, so this is a great gaming experience for sure. Uh, again guys, all PC components can be found down below. Before you go, I have one important message left and that is I'm starting up a Discord server and it would feel awesome if you guys wanted to join, so down below you find a link to the Discord server. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now watch either of these two videos and I'll see you guys in the next video.